Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I want to talk to you about the auto industry. I love doing videos about what's going on behind the scenes. And I was talking with somebody uh, and listening more about people that are going to the auctions and what they're seeing, what they're finding. And I found something very, very interesting that I want to share with you. But I'm going to go through a story that counterdicts or what you think would what he had to say about what he just witnessed at the auto uh, uh, auctions about cars going no bid, not, not, you know, literally no bid, no bid, no bid. The same cars he's seeing lining up at the auctions for two or three auctions now in a row where uh, dealers are not going to take these lower amounts. This story would seem to counterdict that, but it's not. Okay. So let me dive into this first. And then I'm going to tell you what he said. The title of the story, it's out of Yahoo Finance, says auto sales. Inventory is still going to be the name of the game, strategist says. Now, this is a story uh, David Briggs talked to an analyst, and they were talking about how uh, expectations are high for Ford ahead of earnings, which reports after the bell. We just heard from General Motors earlier this week, the company handily beat Wall Street expectations, said it has no plans to cut prices on its electric vehicles yet, right? So it says, what lies down the road for the auto industry? And they, they talk with Edmonds Executive Director of Insights, Jessica Caldwell. And he says, uh, he says Ford is out with their sales numbers down 18.4% from the prior month. Now January is usually a rough month for auto sales. But does that tell you perhaps that 2022 dynamic has changed this year? And this is what Jessica said. I don't believe so. De December is generally the best month for auto sales. Jan Sorry, guys, I got to get something to drink. Mm. Get dried mouth talking all day. It says January usually is the worst. So I would never really compare those two. And I think that for 2023, inventory is going to be the name of the game. As that increases, sales should get better because they are very, very limited. I mean, we're still, although recovering and have seen, have been for several months now, still very much down from what we would consider at a normal pace for inventory. Now, let me stop right there and just explain. There are a lot of people that will go to the auto dealer and say, I'm not going to buy anything today because there's literally not what I want, right? Like even if they have the, uh, the brand of car and the model of car, it doesn't have the options package I want. There's just simply, you know, no, nothing to pick from, right? No selection, no, uh, you know, ways to choose like, oh, this has the option package I want, but it's not the color I want. And then, you know, they're being told that if they order the car, it's going to take a long time and, you know, all this stuff. So there's a lot of frustrated buyers and they just leave. Then there's also the buyers that get there and they go, I'm not going to pay these stupid amounts over sticker. And you're like, I know that the auto industry is collapsing. I know that sales are collapsing, right? For a couple of different reasons, two of which I just explained before. You would think that the, the dealers would be lowering their price. But as you can see here, where, what is it? GM comes out and says, we have no plans for lowering our prices. Well, now they were talking about electric cars, but they also mean on any car that's selling well. Electric cars are selling well. Why? Because of the tax incentives. So they're sitting here going, why would we ever lower that? We want to keep prices higher and they want to keep jacking things up. So there'd be a lot of frustration, right? It says right here, Kathy Wood goes on to say, I think traditional auto manufacturers are going to have trouble keeping up with the price declines that Tesla's technology is enabling. And she also goes on to say, I mean, I think right now that probably is the case. Tesla is still almost 60% of all new electric vehicles sold. So in any event, they're going to be something or it's so in any event, they're going to be something big to contend with. As time goes on and more of these automakers are introducing electric vehicles, especially if we do not get some updates from Tesla, having a Tesla is no longer the latest and greatest thing. And there'll be more out there in the market, more to compare with. Someone else is going to come along and the cool new person on the block. And that really appeals to early adopters. So while I think they are an obvious big force to deal with in the market, things are changing. So let me explain, and I totally agree. We are literally in the midst, even though we've been covering this story for about, I don't know, four or five months. The time frame that, ha you know, the, the time lag and how long it takes for the public or the consumer to change their thinking going from, oh yeah, well, these are the days we're just gonna spend way over sticker for cars to going to, 
oh my gosh, I would never pay that much. The auto industry is going to take a header to the point where at the end of that cycle, yes, the auto industry is taking a header. It's going down, 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 and more down. And you're seeing literally dealerships going out of business. You're seeing uh, small and big ones going out of business, all kinds of stuff happening. Uh, that time takes a long time. You know, we're talking like it could take a full year to go from, you know, peak to trough in, a, in emotional buying cycles. And so let me get to this story of boots on the ground for the, the, the auctions. So what he found is he found a handful of cars that have already been running through uh, uh, once or twice. And, and then this would be the third time some of those cars have not sold at the auction. They go all the way through, they roll through, no bid, no bid. They go back down and they sit in inventory, right? Because the dealers are just so, just so dar darn thick headed. They're like, there's no way we're taking a loss. There's no way we're taking a loss where they could simply sell that car at a loss, take that money. Now they're not even playing, paying the flooring fees. They got that figured out, right? Yeah. They took a loss, but now they could take that money and buy cheaper inventory to yet be able to still mark up, but have it beat everybody's prices around and start to rebuild. Right. But just like everything. You'd think that the dealer would know, right? But look at homes, Lennar, Toll Brothers, they're all slashing prices, right? Because they were late to the game. They couldn't, they were, it was going up, going up, and now it's starting to fall and it's going to turn out bad for them. Auto dealers are no different. You know, they, they've got their costs, they're looking down at, you know, but they're not looking at the big picture. Just like a lot of, like what it talked about, GM, the, the electric vehicles, we're not going to lower our prices. Like, do you realize Tesla is dropping their prices significantly? They are taking market share from you, but they're just so pompous. And we're not talking about dealers. We're talking about the actual manufacturers, right? So he was saying, I'm seeing these cars more and more stacking up that are multiple times no bid. So he found at the end of the day, many of those went no bid. Some of them did sell. However, he was looking at the sticker price and I'll give you an example. He was looking at one car. It was, it was actually, um, it was what, $41,000 and it sold for $27,000. So the dealer was trying to sell it, had the original dealer uh, paperwork on it for $41,000. It sold at auction for $27,000, right? That car had been sitting on that dealership. He actually knew this one specifically for just about 90 days. So he knew this dealer wanted to get out from under it because of the carrying costs that they were under already. And they didn't want that thing to sit on their dealership lot for over 90 days. So they, they liquidated it. They took a pretty massive write down, right? He goes, however, this guy is actually smart. He's like, look, I can't fight it. We're at the, the, the we blew past the top. Everything's starting to change. I need to take that money now, which is 27,000 and deploy it better. Now here's the problem. This is what he found. The upper echelon of cars, right? The cars that are around the um, 40,000 and up. Those are going no bid. They're having, unless they're like rare or exotic cars. And even those are falling. The, the exotic cars are falling pretty rapidly, he said. He said, those are going no bid. Dealers are like, we can't sell them for what you're trying to sell them for. The, the dealer starts the action and they're like, we want to take just a little bit of a, a write down or, or nothing at all. They can't sell them even at auction because the, the smaller dealers are going, if you couldn't sell it, why, how can we sell it? So the ones that are getting out and going, screw it, whatever you guys are willing to pay, we'll get out they're, they're selling them. But here's the interesting thing. The cheap cars, the ones that are under $10,000, those are selling still for exorbitant amounts. And the reason why is because the small dealers know that people are hurting and there are more people that have less money, but need a car than people that don't need a car and have more money. Does that make sense? So the, the more expensive the cars, the harder it is to sell them. That's where you're going to see your greatest percentage of drop when this whole thing flushes out, right? The cheaper cars. And again, think about it. Emotional spying. People that don't have a lot of money, but they need to get to work. They need a car. My car's broke down. I didn't have an emergency fund. They are uh, still doing emotional purchases. Why? Because they're financing these cars. They go, you know, what's the difference between a $7,000 car and $11,000 car when it comes down to the financing? What, an extra like 60 bucks? maybe 150 bucks a month. I don't care. I just need it. So what's happening is still people that aren't prepared financially, that aren't successful because they didn't save, they're in debt, that all they look at is those monthly bills. This is, 
they're still emotionally buying. This is still that blow off top. So now you've seen the top explode, pop off of the real, the housing, the car market. It's all over. Auto sales are collapsing. High-end exotics are falling. Now the mid-range cars are falling, but you still have the lowest end price points still very strong. So what will it take for that to bottom to break? I'll tell you, uh, unemployment getting larger and worse. And you are going to see that in the next six months. You will see that and you'll say, well, you watched it on the Ninja first. But guys, the bottom is dropping. I've got my list of cars. I love it when you put what cars and put it, please. Hashtag the type of car you'd like in the comment section. I love reading what dream car you want to buy and that you are going to buy on this next downturn and we are going to crush it. I got my 69 Camaro, oh, I don't have it yet. I'm gonna buy it. I'm still gonna buy a Ferrari just because I've always wanted one since a kid, um, even though they're way overpriced and I don't wanna fix it, but I'm gonna buy my C8 Corvette and I still, yes, I'm gonna get a Lambo. Why? Because it's, again, I had the Countach poster and then um, I want my Shelby Cobra. Guys, that's my list. Let me know how bad that list is. Let me know in the comment section what your dream cars are. And you know what? I think I may throw in a Pinto because why not? The Ninja needs a Pinto because sometimes it's just good to run with the horses. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.